I've come expecting something from God tonight. <clears throat> you got your Bibles, we're going to turn with us. We'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Be much in prayer for us. I'm the least among the least, and I've realized that. Boy, I want an anointing for this tonight, I'm telling you. <clears throat> I've been on my face before God all evening. And I've asked him to anoint me, and I'm expecting it. Don't expect no less from him. <clears throat> you pray for us a few minutes. Thursday morning, I woke up. I've been off Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this past week, and I woke up, and the Lord put a song in my heart, and I have not been able to get past it. <clears throat> I asked the Lord to show me why he had placed this on my heart. And Saturday afternoon, me and Stephen went fishing for a few minutes, and God began to open the door. <clears throat> Is it not precious when the creator visits mankind and begins to move on us? And begins to share with us what he wants to tell us. And what an honor it is for God to visit me. We take that too lightly. Sometimes we live in a, a world that has gotten to the place to where they want everything kind of casual. But I don't serve a casual God. And he don't expect his people to be casual when we approach him. We've come to the place we have forgotten that... He's king and he's royalty and we are to come before him with gifts and we are to bring ourselves in a manner to him that he will accept us. And I'm grateful that he's accepted me this afternoon. If you got your Bibles and want to look with us to the 40th chapter, we'll begin reading at the first verse and we're going to skip down and we're going to read a few verses throughout this chapter. It says in the first verse, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Every valley, in the fourth verse, every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crook shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall reveal. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Skipping down to the 10th verse, it says, Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his, word before, his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and he shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom. And shall gently lead them that are with young. The 29th verse. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagle, with wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Father, I come to you surrendered and willing that your anointing be great for many are discouraged. Many are weak. Many are battling. And God, they need strength. They need encouraging. They need that God from you that only you can give. 
And Lord, we're grateful, Lord, tonight for your word and what it means. And Father, thank you for your visitation. Thank you for the power that's quickening this mortal body. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a part of what you want to do. Lord, I've surrendered myself. I prayed. I studied. God, I'm expecting great things from you. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us as a servant tonight. Weak and willing. But God, your strength is going to flow through us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us. Use me now, Lord. Use me, God, like you've never used me. (laughs) I'm glad, God, you've got power that we've not even experienced. I'm glad, God, you've got glory that we're going to behold. And I thank you for being a part of that. Lord, as humble as we can, God, we ask you tonight to flow through us. Visit you people again. Pour out your great spirit upon your people. Lord, those that might be discouraged, increase their faith. Give them strength. Lord, the battle's long and we're weary. And we need your power to flow in us again. (laughs) Thank you, God, for your word. Now use me. In your great and glorious name we pray. Amen. The word... Tells us in the beginning this to comfort you. I want you to know tonight God's come to comfort some people. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. You just pray. Let God minister to you. But he said it with his own mouth that he'd come to comfort us. And I want you to realize as we look and study tonight, he said when we'd go through these valleys, and we've been in some valleys. God's people has walked through some valleys of late, and they're weary and they're tired. And sometimes we as people, we get kind of weak, and we want to get just to the place almost to give up. But he's teaching us here in this fourth verse that the valleys would be exalted. And what I want you to realize now, you can climb the mountains and you'll find rocks and you'll find peaks and you'll find places where God will meet with us in the mountains. But it's down in that fertile soil in the valley where God has planted some things down in me that I will never part from me. It's where I've grown. It's where I've drawn my strength to climb the mountain again. So when we look at this, When we're down in the valley, just realize that God's trying to put you in a fertile place. And he's going to impart some strength and some plant some things in you that will grow. And as you begin to climb the mountains and the hills come to you, they'll be made low. And when we get to that peak on the top of those mountains, we can meet with him again. Because he dwells in the top of the mountains. The Bible says, Behold... The Lord God will come with a strong hand. I want you to realize tonight, when I was asking the Lord, what does this mean? What do you want me to see in this? Where are we supposed to go with this? I began to see a strong hand that many times in my life, when I would have fallen, has lifted me up. I've seen a strong hand when man thought they had the advantage and God would always make me away when there seemeth no way. I've seen times when the enemy said it's enough and I've done you, I've just about destroyed you and God's hand would come in and pick me up again and establish my going after he had set me upon a solid rock. And I want you to realize God's hand's still real and he's still able and he's still willing to put his people in a place so we can be established and we can continue our journey that God's put us on. 
Now I want you to look as he said it a little bit further. He said he'd rule over them. And I want you to realize what I begin to see in this is we've not allowed God to be God in our life a lot of times and it's caused us problems. But he wants to be the Lord of our life and he wants to rule over us and he wants to do things in our life that he intended on us very from the beginning and the foundation of the world. I began to look at myself and we was down there the other day and I said, God, what is my purpose? What, what did you see when you created me in the beginning? When you said, let us make man, and he spoke these things into existence with his mouth, but he took his hands and he made man. And when he spoke and breathed the breath of life into him, he already had a plan for me and you tonight. Right where we sit and right where we stand. And I asked him, Lord, what was your intentions when you made me? What did you see in me? Why, did you, how, why have you loved me into this place? But he said, behold, his reward is with him. I'm telling you, we're going to reap if we'll faint not. If we'll just continue to sow. And I thought about you, Brother Ray. I told you I've been praying for you this week. Sow anyway. Paul didn't stop even though they put him into prison. God arranged it to where they brought him to him. And he didn't have to even go to them. So whatever God's will is in it, just keep on doing what God's called you to do and what he's put you here to do. And his work's before him. And folks, I want you to realize we've got a work to do. I realized today again that many come through and are in the place to where God has put me to minister to them. And there's a work for us to do. And my, it's the people that are hurting and are hungry and need the perfect will of God in our lives to be shown into their life. But he said he would feed his flock as a shepherd. And I read in the scriptures where he was the good shepherd that giveth his life for the sheep. And a shepherd that tends to his sheep has no need Whatsoever, my mind went back to the 23rd Psalms to where he had told them that he was their shepherd. And they would have no need. And they could lay down in comfort beside the still waters. And that's what our shepherd has allowed us to do and is allowing us to do. And I want you to look a little bit further. He said he'd gather the lambs. My mind, he'd pull them up into his arms. And I testify of this, this afternoon, how many times that God has taken us into his arms and he's blessed us and he's carried us through places we couldn't walk ourselves. I have watched, even since I've been here, some folks have walked in places that you wouldn't walk in by yourself. Steps that you made were not your steps. He carried you and allowed you to ride upon his arms and walk in his strength and not in yours. And my, what a shepherd has carried me when I couldn't carry myself, has walked with me when I wasn't able to walk alone, has walked through the things that I was not able to carry myself through. As we look a little further, I want you to look, and he said, those that have young, he's led them. I want you to realize what the Lord's trying to show us here as a church. We've got young, and I'm not talking about just young folks, but we've got young Christians that still haven't developed some of the skills that some of us older ones and some of the things that has been implanted and instilled in us. And I thank God for the pastors that has worked and poured into me and prayed and sought God and plowed fertile ground in my life to put a foundation there. And it's our place with our young ones to plow and to plant and to put in them the things that God has instilled in us that they might grow but he said he giveth power to the faint and to them 
to have no might, he increases their strength. I want to share something with you. Your power is limited. Your doings, anything that you have control over is but mere nothing. But his power. We have never experienced all of his power. I want you to understand that he gives us power. And we have not ever moved into the place that God wants to move into. And he wants to bring us into the place of power and of strength that he's put instilled in us. Some of us have sought it. Some of us have tried. Some of us have said, well, it doesn't look like it's ever going to happen. But I want you to look a little bit further. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord. I want to talk to you just a few minutes about. Teach us, Lord, how to wait. If God give me a thought, I'd like to talk to you about teach us, Lord, how to wait. And we find in this scripture tonight as we look at this, and I've looked at this a lot of times. I have visited In the last 30 years of my trying to stand, I have visited this scripture many times. But I never realized what the Lord was trying to show us in this word wait. We find if we go back to the Hebrew language, kava is what this is. And kava means to to weave or to twist a rope. Not talking about a rope itself but a work that is woven and twisted together as a process. And when we wait upon the Lord, we begin to weave our hearts and our minds with His. We begin to fall into the place when we wait of surrender. And God, not my will, but thine be done. And as we look and we intertwine and we weave with him and his mind becomes ours and his heart becomes ours and his eyes become ours and his ears become ours. As we wait, those pleas that we make, we hear answers. And we understand what the Lord wants us to see. But I want you to look and I want to take you to a place tonight. And I've talked to you about this before. But there's some new meanings that God has shown me in this eagle. This eagle has gone through a life. And the lifespan of them can be from 30 to 50. They've even think that there's some that's even grown into 70 years. But an eagle goes through a time in his life to where... That that once adorned him is his wings, his feathers, his beaks, and his eyes, and those talons that he's caught prey with to feed him becomes a burden to him. He gets to the place to where he comes to the time to where the feathers that is on him begins to stick to his body, and those feathers that's in his wings cannot carry him any longer. And he goes into a place and he finds him a place in the valley. And he goes into a moat. And as he goes into a moat, the calcium that has built up upon his beak and the the talons that have once caught him prey has become stiff with calcium. And in a place so much to his eyes begin to calcium over and he walks around like a turkey And he drops his head because he cannot lift it up in the place he's in. Now I want you to realize that it looks like, okay, this is going to be a bad thing. But you hang in here with me just a minute. As we look at this bird and we see him at one time has been a majestic bird of the sky. He has no business in the place he is because he's made to soar, not walk around like a common bird. And I want you to realize in seeing this tonight, it's time that we took our flight like God intends instead of us walking around like a bunch of common birds. Take our place as he goes through a moat. This eagle begins to see the feathers on him And they begin to fall out. 
And he begins to see those wings that once was his strength that carried him into the heavenly lofty places and that he could fly over the desert and see a, a rabbit a mile down the road has now become worthless to him. He can't see. He can't fly. The, the feathers that once adorned his body that made him look so beautiful has become frail and useless. But this bird has this opportunity. He's come to a place in his life where he's got to make a decision. He's got to decide, am I going to live or am I going to die? Folks throughout this world in churches everywhere tonight is in this place. Am I going to live or am I going to die? Am I going to stay with this thing or am I going to lay it down? Is the journey this far been worth going just a little bit further? <laughs> am I going to quit? Where am I at? Don't you hear me? While this bird has been stripped of what used to be his glory, what used to be his gifts, and what used to be a way to reap for him has become no good. He begins to realize that there's something going to have to happen. And as I was standing behind a 20-year-old boy, Fishing Saturday. God says, something's got to happen. You're in a place where you're going to have to make a decision, son. Are you going to move forward? Or are you going to move back? Are you going to walk around like a common bird? Or are you going to go to the place that I've designed you to be? This bird that has once been glorious, this bird that once flew the lofty heights, finds itself in a place where he can't even help himself. A young man walked in my office today, he began to weep. He said, My wife. Is fishing to leave. He said, I've done everything I know within my power to keep her. She's leaving. I said, God, it's time to step up. It's time to have what he needs. And as I begin to minister to this young man, a fine young Christian man, as I know, I begin to see this bird. Let me tell you what he does. As the sun begins to shine, he finds him a place where the sun is shining bright. And he goes and he lays himself upon a rock. And he begins to bathe in the sun that is shining upon him. And when the sun begins to hit him, I did not know this till I studied this Last night, something within his body as the sun begins to shine on him, laying in a rock, them new feathers begin to come forth. New growth begins to start. And above him, when he sees him laying on the rock, them eagles that has been where this eagle is, flies over the top. Of the valley looking down. And they begin to scream to him. Hang on. If you'll hold on just a little longer. It's going to be worth it. That beak that you have that's calciumed over. That rock that you lay on. If you just begin to pound it on the rock. The calcium begin to come off. And those feathers are starting to grow back. And all of a sudden, meat from above falls upon the ground. 
And the eagle that's dying sees hope through some meat that has fallen from above. He realizes, I've got to get up or die. I've got to move forward. And I've got to strike the rock if I want to make it. My, my. If you want to get somewhere, we're going to have to dig in and strike the rock until something begins to break loose. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been waiting for breakthrough for about seven years. And this afternoon, as I strike in the rock, God said it's time. I'm going to drop you some meads from above. Begin to eat. My goodness. As he hears the words from encouragement, folks, we got folks just laying on the rocks. We got folks right here in this church that is dying. They've laid themselves on the rock. The sun is shining upon them. It's time to scream. It's time to tell them to hang on. It's time to tell them. I want you to realize something I found out. That the young don't do this. This is not a place for the young to fly over. Because they've not experienced what that eagle on the rock has went through. It's us that has been through this place and the feathers have grown back and our beak has become sharp again from striking on the rock. And we've been able to claw our way through the rock and our talons has become sharp and usable again to obtain the meat that they need. That's the ones that go and then feed the eagle that's laying in the valley. I want you to realize God has gave us that glory back. God has given us a spirit that we have the power to feed that that's laying on the rock. I don't know about y'all, but there's been times I've seen them. Do you realize that them that's in the molting period, they will even fight amongst each other. To sometimes one will kill the other ones. How many times have you seen folks that were not where they needed to be that devoured one another? Literally killed each other spiritually. But it's time we as God's people would take on the responsibility. And folks, it's great. God has given us a charge tonight. I believe with all of my heart, God has given us a charge to begin to take that meat that has become easy for you and I again. They can't hunt for their self. They can't feed their self. They can't fly anymore. It's time that you and I take that lawfully height again that God has given us with meat in our talons and begin to scream the word of God into that little eagle that's laying down there dying. And when he gets up, that whatever it is, it doesn't give a scientific name for the sun shining upon the eagle's body that makes the feathers begin to grow when he puts himself on that rock. But when he begin to grow, the Bible teaches us right here that we shall mount up with wings as eagles. I want you to hear the word Hear what the Spirit of God is trying to tell us tonight. 
We are dropping that meat and we are screaming the word of God. He said, comfort ye, comfort ye, saith the, the, word, saith the Lord, saith God. He said, these places that we're going through, the hard curves, the hard times, the, the problems that we have that this world presents will be exalted. The hills will be brought low. And folks, he's got a reward that's with him. I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is telling us. When we begin to scream out, and this eagle begins to eat, and his feathers begin to grow back, I want you to see the greatest picture God has ever shown me in my life. I look at this eagle as he has pounded the rock and his strength has begun to come back and he's begun to step up into places. And every once in a while, he'll raise his arms out, he'll raise his ring, wings out and he'll look at the feathers that's begin to grow back. And all the time while he's down here, his desire is to be back up there. His desire, his heart, his purpose is to be up there, not down here where he is. And every once in a while, while he's on that rock, he'll begin to flap his wings and his feet will come off the ground. And he'll say, not long. Not, not long. I'm almost there. My strength is beginning to come back. The feathers is beginning to grow. And then all of a sudden, one morning, he says, I'm going to give her a try. I'm going to see if she'll work today. I'm going to give her all I've got. I'm going to fly once again. And it begins to take flight. And when he gets off of the ground, whoa, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Woo! Woo! When he gets in the air, <laughs> he, befind, he finds a wind current. And he just puts his wings out. And he begins to glide. <laughs> and in a big circle, never having to flap his wings, he goes higher and higher and higher <laughs> till he goes plumb out of sight and he's returned to the glory that he was designed to do. He returns to the purpose that God put him here. <laughs> oh. I told you I come expecting something. Mm. But he gets up there. You can't even see him no more, but you know what to tell me. What I read, you can hear him scream. And I believe he's screaming victory. I believe he's screaming, I made it. 
I believe you're screaming, I've returned to the purpose that you designed me to do. And I began, began to praise his God with a scream and saying, thank you, Lord, I've made it through. Through your grace, through your mercy, and through your church, I've returned to the glory that you designed me. <laughs> oh, my, do you see what God's trying to do with us? Do you see where God wants to put us? It's not down here with the common birds. It's to fly with the eagles. It's to get up here in his glory and fly above this world. If you're one of those eagles tonight that's made it through, it's time to scream. It's time to take the meat that we've been instilled with and begin to scream and to drop it out to them eagles that's dying. It's time that we've done our part. The Bible says and teaches me if we'll do our part, he'll do his. He said, I will if you will. But what I want you to understand is this eagle that's made it through this and he's up there dropping meat. You know what he's doing? He's fulfilling. He's doing exactly what was done unto him. And he's returning that glory that God has given him because he's experienced and he lived through it. And it's the obligation and responsibility of the eagle that's been down there that's returned to the lofty heights. It's his responsibility now. That's why the young ones can't do it. They've not yet experienced it and they're not required to do it. I want you to hear me tonight. If you're that eagle on the bottom, if you're that eagle that has once flown and you can't fly no more, your vision's been dimmed. The Bible teaches me that, that the people that don't have a vision is going to perish. And I want you to realize that there's hope tonight. The eagle has flown over you tonight and dropped you meat that you'd be able to eat. But you lay yourself on the rock and you go to basking in the light of the sun and those feathers are going to begin to grow again. And you'll return to that that God has designed you to do. And I'm telling you tonight, upon authority of God's word, it says you will run and not grow weary. I don't know about y'all, but it teaches me that the young is going to run and they'll even get weary and they'll faint. But you and I, that have weathered the storms and come through the hard places, it says here in this word that we shall run and not grow weary. Home is in sight. I don't know about y'all, but I've got me some glimpse this evening. It's not far out there. And when you realize this or not, when you get above the clouds, it don't matter how stormy it is down here, but when you get above the clouds, the sun's always a shining. And I want you to realize our place is up here and not down here. It also teaches me that we're going to walk in some more places. Yes, it does. It says this. But it says we shall walk and not faint. In other words, those things that are behind us, let's leave them. Let's grow from them. Let's learn from them. Let's use them to our advantage to be a witness and to be a help and to be a strength and impart them things into people that need it. But don't ever get to the place where you get weak and you get weary. I'm going to tell you something in looking at this tonight. We as experienced eagles, we are not got long. This is a very time-sensitive matter. Because the sun is fixing to come get to church. And when he does, I don't know about y'all, 
But I still got loved ones and I still got friends. And I still got folks that I know that's unprepared to meet God. I don't want their blood upon my hands. I want to see the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart. I want to walk in His glory. I want to fulfill that He's designed me to do. What is my purpose? What is my place? I love you, but it's time for us to fly. Thank God for what he's done for us. If you would stand, stand to your feet. Brother Knight, Sister Star, if you would, come. If you've got a place in your life tonight that you need, and thank God I have not looked at nobody here tonight. I asked the Lord this afternoon. I went and climbed over in the boat. And that's a pretty good altar from the floorboard to the front deck. there have been a many a times that I've got on right there. Either in the water or riding down just out there in the shop. I realized this afternoon as we looked at this and we examined this. I said, God, I want to move into your glory. God, I want to move into my purpose. God, I want to win those folks that I'm supposed to win. Lord, I want to witness. Like, God, I haven't witnessed in a long time. <laughs> Lord, I want to take these young folks that's in my class every Sunday and scream and feed meat to them. Thank you, Jesus. And help them in their journey. Those men that God has given me every single day. God, let me win them. Let my eyes see them as you see them. Let my heart be touched as where your heart is touched. And folks, I realize that's who we're supposed to be. That's what God put us here to do. I'm going to move into my place. I've got expectations that I just kind of let go to the wayside. I've got promises. Yes. I'm talking about promises. Yes. From God Himself. Yes, sir. Yes. That I've almost let the enemy talk me out of. Yes. But they're mine. <laughs> Oh, they're mine. Hold on. Yes, amen. They're mine. Yes. They're not for sale. They don't belong to the enemy. They're mine. From God Almighty. They're mine. If you have a place tonight, if you want to move up the opportunities for you, if you want to get closer, it's here. If you need to just strike the rock and get the calluses off of you and yes. the calcium off your beak yes. and the scales to fall from your eyes, yes, Jesus. now's the time. Would you come? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. As he calls, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as he goes they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint teach me lord teach me lord to wait.
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he calls. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. If you wait upon the Lord, He'll renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings as He calls. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. I'm going to wait upon the Lord and renew my strength. I'm going to mount up with wings as an eagle I'm gonna run and not be weary I'm gonna walk and not faint teach me Lord teach me Lord to wait they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as he calls they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint teach me lord teach me lord to wait Sometimes it seems awfully small. What we have to do seems awfully small. But God has charged us and has given us. I thought the last time I stood, I said, Lord, what a mess. I said, God, you deserve so much more. And Pastor Knight said something Sunday. And some people might have let this get past them. But as you read the scripture where it says we shall bind on earth and it shall be bound in heaven. We shall loose on earth and it shall be loosed in heaven. I walked into my office Monday morning and I shut the door behind me and I locked it. And I said, God, here's my keys. Yes. There's some things I'm going to unlock today that I've not ever experienced. And there's some things that the enemy has tried to do over the years and I'm going to lock the gate on that one done with him behind me thank you Jesus and this week God has given me victory that I've never had hallelujah because I've learned something those keys count for something and he did not say I give you the key it was plural yes plural so when I bind things it takes one key but when I lose something yes. it takes something else yes yes so I'm telling you tonight don't ever think yourself to be insignificant and count for nothing because God loves you and he wants to instill in you and he wants to bless you. Yes, we do travel and we do have hindrances and we do have burdens. But I found myself this week saying, God, I don't care what he does. It doesn't make no difference. I'm not glorifying him. I'm glorifying you. Yes. I'm going to move into a place regardless of what it's going to cost me to win this thing. And Lord, you are able to strengthen me when there's no one around. You will carry my burden if I cast them upon you. And thank God he has done that this week. And I want to say to each of you, 
You have prayed countless for me and my family. You've carried us. And thank God for you. I have prayed this week for you like I have never prayed. I know you lift us up. And the encouraging words, the meat that you have dropped in our family. Thank God for you. Keep up the flight. Keep screaming and keep feeding. Because God is doing a work in you. And I love you greatly. And I want to give God praise for what he's doing. I'm grateful for the visitation of the Lord. I don't know about you, but this is not ordinary. We have felt more tonight. We felt more Sunday than some churches get to in years. It's not a place to approach a holy God being ordinary. This time that we, I'm charging you, church, as one of you, to become extraordinary. When we find in the New Testament when the kings came to him as a babe laying in a manger, they brought gifts. You and I do not go before a king without bringing something. And I'm talking about bringing a gift to him. As little as I am, and as insignificant as it seems, I still have a gift to bring before him. It's my worship. It's my praise. It's the gifts that he's given me. And when I come before him with those, you know what he does with them? He adorns them. He takes them and he blesses them and he breaks them and he gives them back to us. He says, now go feed my children. And I'm going to say this, and this is as far as I feel like the Lord wants me to go. When Peter had denied him three times, do you realize the Lord asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And the first time he told him, he said, feed my sheep. The second time he told him to feed my lambs. And the third time he told him again, the commission has gone out to feed his people. I love you. Thank God for you. I turn it over to you. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. Thank the Lord for the word and for the delivery of the word and the anointing on God's servant delivering this word tonight. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Isaiah 40, 31. What a wonderful, wonderful, anointed, yielded, obedient message. Thank you for obeying God, Brother Scott. We bless you in Jesus' name. I know everybody enjoyed every syllable and utterance that was spoken here tonight. And you worshiped God in spirit and in truth. And I give God all the glory and all the praise. Be sure you tell Brother Scott how much you appreciate how God used him before you leave tonight. Don't leave unless you just have to before you tell him that you, you love and appreciate him. Just It wouldn't hurt to tell his wife that you love her too. Appreciate her. And we just, we love this family and bless them in Jesus' name. And I thank God for every, every, every time God manifests himself in any special way. And I just bless the Lord for what God's done. And I, I believe it would be proper and in order if in dismissal, if we would just praise the Lord for what God's already done. Can we do that? Father, thank you. We bless you, Father, glorify you for all that you've done. And I praise you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do, Lord Jesus, what you're doing every, every service, every day, God, every breath, every heartbeat. I thank you for blessing, God. I thank you for ministering your blessings and your spirit and your word and your truth, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I praise you, God, the Holy Ghost power, yoke, it breaks the yoke of bondage in Jesus' name. Praise God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We